What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. Today, I want to get into a press conference with Robert Sala, Aaron Rodgers. They talk to the media. Let's break it all down. So this feels like absolutely shocking to me because it is Thursday and the Jets play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days from now, four, 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 four days from now. But Robert Sala still will not rule out Hassan Reddick yet. Any chance Hassan? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Been in meetings all morning. No, he's, yeah, I don't think he's here. So is he ruled out Monday? Not ruling him out yet. How feasible is that though? Like if he were to show up at some point, have to, have to it's feasible. That. I mean, uh, the opponent we're playing now just had two guys show up to practice, so um, you trust that your veterans who know how to do things the right way will get themselves ready to play. <laughs> I kind of feel for Asala in a way. He's he just has he's up there. He's got to answer the questions. It's. Uh, he, I, he sounds tired of it. He really does. I would be floored at this point if Hassan Reddick signed between now and Monday and he was able to play in this game. I would be surprised by that. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think he is going to sign before this game at this point. I kind of feel like it's going to be between week one and week two. I don't know. They, I, I've said everything I could say on it. <laughs> There's nothing else you could possibly say other than just Here's the information. Robert Sala doesn't know when he's going to be in, hasn't talked to him. Nobody knows. Uh, Jeremy Fowler, though, I thought had an interesting quote on the Hassan Reddick situation. He said, no one knows what Reddick will do. There doesn't seem to be any action between him and the team who were clearly on different pages in terms of his long term future in New York. When the trade was made in April, even if he returns, will Reddick be a happy and motivated member of the organization? The Jets have been pleased with the development of former first round pick Will McDonald off the edge, but it's naive to think the Jets couldn't use a boost from Reddick. They could like Will McDonald all they want, and I I like Will McDonald. I think he's going to be a good rotational pass rusher for them this year. If they were really so fond of him and his development, they wouldn't have taken a meeting with, uh, Jav I almost said Javon Kinlaw, jeez. <laughs> Jadavion Clowney or Shaq Barrett, and they wouldn't have then traded for Hassan Reddick. They could like McDonald. They liked McDonald last year enough to take him and then play him 19% of snaps. They also had JFM a year ago. They had Bryce Huff a year ago. The defensive line looked a lot different than what it does now with no Hassan Reddick, no John Franklin Myers, or no Bryce Huff. So, uh, we'll, we, we'll see, but Tack McKinley, Will McDonald, and Michael Clemens are going to have their work cut out for them because it's it's going to be a lot. Speaking of Robert Sala, he also talked up Aaron Rodgers as a teammate, and this is one that I just think everyone needs to hear. Um, look, I, I, I've said it before. He's an unbelievable teammate. There's, uh, the guys in the locker room love him. Uh, they look up to him. They seek advice from him. Um, you know, I, I noticed it the other day and shot him a text. I think his, I think it's fascinating the way he interacts with the D line. Um, you know, so he and just, just the way he interacts with everybody. You know, so he's, uh, he's the ultimate teammate, and, um, and so I think he, just his leadership and um, has been invaluable to the organization. I really just don't want to hear the Aaron Rodgers as a bad teammate argument. It's just. It's a narrative that you saw on the internet and are believing. Is If you believe that, you're just going based off of like not anything that anyone with the Jets has said or believes. You're going off of what uh, fans or the national media believes. And it's just, it's frankly not not correct <laughs> in, in, this, in this circumstance. Since being a member of the Jets, he's been a good teammate. I can't speak to his final year or, or so in Green Bay. Maybe he was just done with it then, but since he's been with the Jets, he's done everything asked of him. He took the biggest pay cut in sports. He then was with the team rehabbing while injured, recovering from the Achilles. I don't know what else the guy's supposed to do. Sala also confirmed that Mike Williams will be on a pitch count for this game, similar to what Brees Hall was on early in the year last year, first four weeks of the year. We saw that with Brees Hall. I think you will see that uh, with Mike Williams. I'm not expecting a lot from him in this game. I think maybe a couple of t a catches and like 
a handful of targets would be my guess. I think it's going to be a heavy dose of Brees Hall and Braylon Allen running the ball. And in the passing attack, Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall and Tyler Conklin, I think, are going to be the top three guys and targets in this game. Maybe there's a surprise. Who knows? Maybe Xavier Gibson or Malachi Corley, but I'm not crazy optimistic that Mike Williams has this stellar game out of the gate. I think he comes on slow, and then in the second half of the year is when he starts to be uh, looking like Mike Williams of old. Aaron Rodgers spoke on his return and the fact that it's against the 49ers. After what happened last year on the open night, might there be a moment right before the game or perhaps early in the game you take a pause and reflection just to consider the long journey back and maybe after the fourth play and say, here we go, now we're smooth sailing from here. Yeah, I mean, it might be a little smirk after the fourth one. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I'm sure they'll catch it, you know. But I'm in a good mind uh, mind space, you know. I've um, really uh, had a year to remember uh, in a lot of ways. Some some really uh, uh, difficult things with some great things as well. So there'll be, there's always a perspective moment uh, during the anthem uh, to collect your thoughts and, and Kind of send gratitude out to the universe for the opportunity to be standing on the field in pads. Um, so I'll be really excited about that. Do you have something to prove at this stage of your career? Oh, I don't know. I think you always have something to prove. Uh, it just kind of changes who you're proving that to. I think the older you get. And just being against the 49ers, you know, team, he, he's a Northern California guy. That's the Northern California team. The 49ers passed on him and. You know, he's a team. Uh, this is a guy who's lost to them in the playoffs a few times. And, you know, I, I really liked his answer there. It's going to be, I think, for him, emotional in a way. Like, this it was a long awaited thing for him to come in and play with the Jets. It didn't last very long. That's getting pushed back a year. It was a long wait. It's a long wait for Rodgers. It was a long wait for the fans. I'm just. I know he's so ready for it. I'm so ready for it. I don't that which is why again it's Thursday and I'm still I'm, I'm amped up. I'm ready for this game right now. I want to strap on a helmet and get out there myself, but he's still got 4 days to go. Um, and that's pretty much the latest from Jets camp today. Quiet practice, didn't get a ton of info from the media today, but it's still a waiting game on Hassan Reddick. Mike Williams is going to be on a pitch count. And Aaron Rodgers is just amped up to get back on the football field. Guys, that'll do it for me in this one. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time.